Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for all that have gathered here again. Here we go again. The theater is open, and the summations are coming in. In fact, right now we're again running over the norms of congressional oversight. We're dabbing at the edges of rubbing a rough shot on the Constitution, asking for uh, things that we don't. But I am glad about one thing. I'm glad that the chairman read into the record today the Mueller report. I'm glad that he quoted, as he said, this is a quote directly from the Mueller report. I just wish my chairman would actually go read the rest of it that he has uh, been offered to read, which he has chose not to read. Um, but he did leave out one thing. He left out something in the Mueller report from just now. He read McGahn's testimony beautifully, did everything, but he left out what he doesn't want to have to come back to and the frustrating thing that has brought us here again and again and again, and that is the conclusions. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction charge. There's nothing here. After two years of doing this, we can read it in. You can talk about how you don't like it. You can talk about what you would like to ask. But at the end of the day, it's interesting. We'll read in the quotes that make the headlines, but we're also not going to read in the bottom line of what was actually concluded. So the Democrats are here trying again. The Mueller report concluded there was no collusion, no obstruction, because the report failed to provide damning information against the president. The majority claims we need to dig deeper deeper than the two years of investigation conducted by what is considered a prosecutorial dream team because that probe ended without criminal charges against the president or his family. The special counsel closed up shop without giving Democrats anything to <laughs> deliver to their base. Now the Democrats are trying desperately to make something out of nothing, which is why <coughs> the chairman has, again, haphazardly subpoenaed today's witnesses. That move, though, has actually ensured the witness will not testify. You know, this is becoming a pattern. The chairman knew this, I believe, when he sent the subpoena last month, but instead of inviting the witness to testify voluntarily and working with McGahn's counsel to find mutual agreeable time and scope for the testimony, the chairman rushed to maximize headlines by issuing a subpoena. That subpoena was the third in just four months, more subpoenas than the prior chairman issued in six years. The chairman had several ways out here. He took none of them. The chairman could have invited the witness to testify voluntarily. That was the practice in the 1990s when the White House counsel testified before Congress, but the chairman did not do that. Instead, he launched a subpoena at the witness without any consultation or follow-up with the witness's lawyer. The chairman could have invited the witness to testify behind closed doors, but that would have been politically expedient, and you wouldn't have been here, and the show would not have been as exciting. A closed-door conversation would not have generated those headlines, and everything that we're looking at today, even gaveling in today's hearing without a witness, is theatrical. The cameras love a spectacle, and the majority loves a chance to rant against the administration. I just am glad today to see that we don't have chicken on the dice. The chairman orchestrated today's confrontation when he could have avoided it because he's more interested in the fight than fact-finding. Take the Mueller report, which we've already heard quoted from. More than 99% of the Justice Department has offered to the chairman. For an entire month, the chairman has refused to take a look at it. The Attorney General who volunteered, volunteered to testify before the committee, the Chairman changed the rules for the first time in the committee's 200-year history, thus blocking General Barr from testifying. I cannot emphasize this enough. The track record demonstrates he does not actually want information. He wants the fight, but not the truth. The closer he actually comes to obtaining information, the further we run from it. The Democrats claim the need today's witness to investigate obstruction of justice, but that investigation was already done. Robert Mueller spent two years running it and then closed it. We are not a prosecutorial body, but a legislative body that does have valid congressional oversight. But let's talk about that Mueller report for just a second. It's really interesting to me that the Mueller report was actually, within 24 hours of coming out, the chairman and the majority subpoenaed for all the documents. In fact, we have a legal subpoena that asks the, the attorney general to provide documents he cannot legally provide. That's been covered in this committee for the last two weeks exhaustively, and even the panel that was with us last week agreed that the subpoena asked the Attorney General to do something illegal by exposing 6E information. That was his own witnesses said that last week. But you know what's interesting to me is that we've subpoenaed the documents, we've subpoenaed that we want underlying documents, we've subpoenaed stuff that we can't get, but you know the one thing that we seem to avoid is Mr. Mueller himself, the one who wrote it. We've asked since April about Mr. Mueller coming. But every time we seem to get close to Mueller, Mueller just gets pushed on a little bit. Hadn't seen a subpoena here, and this is what's really amazing. We'll get back to subpoenas in a moment, but just think about that. You wanted the work of the author, but you don't want to talk to the author. Keep that penned for just a moment. When we look at this, 99% of the information is at the Democrats' fingertips. And it's a Mueller report Attorney General offered to Speaker Pelosi, Chairman Allen, and others 
have seen it, but they refuse. So don't be fooled. The majority wants the fight. They want the drama. He does not actually want the information he claims to be seeking. After the administration made volumes of information available to this committee, the chairman issued overbroad subpoenas and now harangues the administration for being unable to comply with those subpoenas. In fact, it's the Democrats who are engaging, not engaging in the accommodation process, abruptly cutting off negotiations and rejecting olive branches by the administration. This is where I want to come back to something my chairman just said a moment ago. His quote was in his opening statements that our subpoenas are not optional. Well, we found out a lot about subpoenas over the last month or so in this committee. I found out that subpoenas maybe now are not optional. Let's add to the list. Subpoenas are also a discussion starter. A subpoena is to give us better standing in court. Not my quotes, the chairman's quotes. So what is it? Is a subpoena the legal document that we've talked about all along in here and the forceful document that all attorneys in this country actually use? Or is it a discussion starter? Is it to help our standing in court? Or is it we don't want it ignored? At this time, it is amazing to me that the accommodation process, and we talk about the committee, and the chairman forcefully talked about our oversight. I agree with the chairman on this point. This committee and all committees in Congress have oversight responsibilities, but it is also the sacred responsibility of the chairman and the majority to use it properly and to not headlong rush into subpoenas when you don't get to what you want. That's all we've seen in five months here. When we don't get what we want, we subpoena. The first one was the acting attorney general. We subpoenaed, and then we backed off. We caved. Then everything else has become a race to get a headline. The accommodation process, not happening. The accommodation process, never here. So don't be fooled. You may have come warning. You may have an opinion that says everything is wrong today with the Mueller report, and the president is guilty. But don't undercut congressional oversight because you can't wait. That's the problem we have right now. And so the question is, are we tearing at the fabric of congressional oversight? It was really interesting to hear some of that last week. When you have a committee that has issued subpoenas that ask the attorney general to do something illegal, when you have subpoenas, when no accommodation process has been put in place, when you have contempt issues that have been in part with no process and no time going through, I just submit to you this, whatever your opinion on the Mueller report, great, glad you have it. But you didn't get it here today and you're not getting it from this committee because this committee undoubtedly doesn't like the author and want to talk to the author of the report. They just want to talk about the report and make innuendo and attack the president at the middle of the day when this committee, who has charge of immigration, who has charge of intellectual property, who we've touched none of, with a crisis at the border, we have an admission that the Economy's good, jobs are happening, unemployment is at the lowest rate. I guess at the end of the day, we can't find something that the Mueller report lets them hang their I-word impeachment on, which they can't even agree on, because the president is continuing to do his job. And we're here again with the circus in full bars. With that, I yield back.